what's going on, Wolfpack Nation? Thank you so much for tuning in with us here today. We are so excited today to, to be having one of our, at least for me, a bucket list guest for sure, and Coach Lindsey Edmonds, former NC State uh, assistant coach and now the head coach over at Rice University. And uh, so obviously his, you know, Flores so far starting off at, at her, her tenure with Rice University. Been, we're so excited to have her. So thank you so much, Coach. Really appreciate your time with us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm excited uh, to talk all things uh, Wolfpack Nation and uh, Rice University. Absolutely. Well, well, again, we'll first start off with obviously the Rice side because I think that that's the, you know, the biggest thing for sure. And, um, you know, I, I think for, for any coach, you know, one of the most exciting times I know is, you know, when you really get that first opportunity to really run your own show, you know, run your own program. And, uh, you know, obviously I know that you you, you could probably say you were definitely uh, – lucky or, or spoiled, you know, to, to be learning, you know, at least under Westmore. And I'm, I'm sure, you know, through previous coaches in the previous time. So, you know, so let me ask you first to me, I'm sure the biggest question, I'm sure pretty much every single state fan, including myself, you know, definitely wants to know is, you know, what's that transition like? I know that it, it's, uh, I'm sure it's an exciting time, but probably a nerve wracking time a little bit as well, you know? So, so what's that transition been like, and, you know, and what would you say has been the, one of the most biggest surprises so far, you know, uh, you know, through that transition of becoming a head coach yeah i mean you know this was a it was an awesome amazing opportunity but i also loved where i was at right so it, it was a really hard decision uh rice just checked a lot of boxes uh for my family and i um but once i took the job it became a whirlwind of things uh the, and the whirlwind has not really stopped it's just changed so the first whirlwind was getting to know my new players at Rice, um, and then my whirlwind became about hiring my staff, and then the whirlwind was moving our family of five across the country from North Carolina to Texas, um, and then July recruiting, and then the season. So the, the whirlwind just kept changing, um, and I thought I had an idea of what Coach Moore did, but until you're in this seat, until you're in that chair, um, you really don't understand the magnitude of how many people need you and how many decisions a day you have to make. Um, mm -hmm. I think the, the one thing that was the most surprising to me was um, I, I thought the cupboard was going to be really, really full when I got here um, and returned four of the five starters. Unfortunately, um, I lost three of those four returning starters uh, to the transfer portal and tried really hard uh, to get them all to stay, right? And so I took that extremely personal um, that they didn't want to stay. They weren't excited about me. They didn't want to play for me. Uh, I think you guys probably know this transfer portal thing is out of control and it's really yeah. not personal. Um, but it took me a while to, to realize that because of the person I am, the big heart that I have, the way that I love my players, um, even in that just meeting them, I wanted them to stay. I wanted them to be there. Um, so that was, the, that was the biggest surprise for me was like, oh, man, like how do we, gra how do we navigate through this now that I've lost three mm -hmm. and there's, it's so late how do I get more players in here at this high academic institution uh, with the, the constraints that they have as far as who they allow in? So that was, that was the biggest surprise for sure. Yeah. Well, and I mean, and, and we'll definitely talk more about the right side, but you definitely bring up a great, a big topic for sure. I definitely wanted to get your kind of talk a little bit more about, because one of the things I definitely think when it comes to the transfer portal is that you've really seen a lot recently that, that the word loyalty is not really valued as much now as it used to be, you know, and, and, uh, you know, you see that throughout pretty much all sports right now, really like, you know, I mean, like, for example, like one story I was, I was re hearing about earlier, which is not basketball, but it's football is Ray Lewis and how, you know, he talked about how he was courted by every team and you name it, but that he said that he made a vow that when he, when he got drafted, that wherever he goes, he's staying there and he did and he's a lifelong Raven. And, and uh, so, so like, you know, same thing with, with basketball, if you like, is, you know, it's, it's, it's more about and I say what you can, what they can do, what the transfer portal can do for you rather than what you can do for the school. And so it's, it's an unfortunate thing, but I mean, so, I mean, obviously I, I, I have a feeling with your, your reaction that, that you're kind of on one side of the fence versus the other. So, I mean, but I mean, I mean, so do you see anything positive at all necessarily with the transfer portal? I mean, like, kind of, I mean, like, I'm just like seeing like if you're like fully on that side of, of the statement, really, when it comes to the transfer portal. Um, so my time at NC State, we were really fortunate. Uh, we did not lose our best players. We kept them. The culture was so good. We kept mm -hmm. them. Um, we unfortunately lost a few players that didn't see the playing time that they wanted. Uh, and you can 
understand and appreciate um, them wanting to play more or them seeing the writing on the wall that they probably weren't going to play much more the following year. Uh, At NC State, we benefited a a tremendous amount. Right before I left, uh, we uh, lock in Diamond Johnson. We lock in Madison Hayes. So I see the benefit (laughs) from that side uh, for sure. And then um, when I come to my level um, here at Rice, uh, when people have stats, they can automatically think I'm going to go higher than here, right? Um, And the P5s are going to call on the mid-majors or the group of five schools that now all of a sudden have these great stats and they'll take them. Um, So we, I'm a little worried that where I'm at now, I'm going to become the JUCOs of the world. Like go and get your experience, go get your stats. I'll call you in two years, but I'm I'm not going to call you out of high school. Um, so that's a little bit of my fear of of where I'm at, uh, versus how we benefited from it, uh, at NC state. So I I have a question, kind of a follow up on that. Do you, and you got to be careful with your words, obviously, but do you feel like, I mean, there's just so much tampering involved, you know, and like, um, these players, like you're, like you're saying, it's like, you know, you're not good your senior high school year, but you're good your sophomore college year. And then, um, that, that you didn't have to re-recruit your own kids. Um, and it's always like in, in today's world where everyone's propping these kids up and, and rightfully so for a lot of them. But um, how, how difficult is that? Is that balancing and managing um, of that? Yeah. You know, uh, a few years ago, I would have always said like, man, I don't know how the Kentucky men basketball, the Duke men basketball, the Carolina men basketball, like I don't, I wouldn't know how, like how did or Kansas, how did those programs operate with the one and dones? Like, how do you manage your roster? Um, But now, unfortunately, that's where our game is getting to. Uh, And I saw a tweet that said college coaches are now just AAU programs with a budget. And I mean, that is so crazy to think. And, but it hit it like right on, like every year we've got to make sure our roster is going to be the same. We got to re-recruit our kids. We got to make sure that they stay. And then the ones that leave, now we got to go hop and find some others and get them to, you know, come in. So uh, I'm really fortunate this year. I only had 10 players on roster, um, but I only had 10 players on roster and one graduated and the other nine are staying. So I'm really fortunate. I'm really excited. I'm really happy. Um, mm-hmm. I just, I, I hope we can continue down that path of the culture being so good uh, and again, the winds hopefully coming more and more. This is where they want to be. This is where they, they want to stay. But it is hard. I mean, that you look around at a lot of different rosters across the country. You see you see rosters with four people on this one or six people on this one or only two on this one. And that is not something that any coach thinks that in the springtime they're going to be dealing with. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And, you know, because and in, in, in talking a little bit to, uh, you know, about your about this season that you had with Rice. So one of the things that really stood out to me was it definitely seemed like that as the season progressed, the team got better and better. Like I know, I think the last six games of the regular season, uh, I think Rice won five of them. And the only one they lost was, I think, in double. I'm sorry, they you guys lost wasn't wasn't overtime, double overtime, actually. Mm-hmm. So and, and then obviously mm-hmm. you won the first game of the Conference USA tournament, which was awesome. So, I mean, you know, I mean, first of all, I mean, obviously got to give hats off to you. I mean, I mean, it just at least from what it seems like, obviously, without actually watching the games. I mean, it, it definitely just shows right there from from looking at schedules. So definitely hats off to you for sure. Uh, you know, for what you did so far. But I mean. You know, kind of taking a look back at these, I mean, do you, did you kind of get that same sense as well? Um, and then, I mean, did you feel like you kind of adjusted things? Like, you know, was there certain things that you adjusted during the season that you maybe can kind of say that that's maybe what helped us get to that point? For sure. Yeah, I think, um, you know, we we started out non-conference. We were okay, um, up a little up and down. Um, and then we hit conference and we started conference 0-5. Uh, and we reached a point where it was like, you know what, like everybody take tomorrow off. I don't even know what to say at this point. I haven't lost five straight games, uh, in probably 14 years. So I was like, uh, I don't even know what to say to you guys. So everybody take tomorrow off. Don't come into the gym. Don't come into the office. Walk away. When we come back on Tuesday, I need everybody to be ready to like win the day. And we're going to take this, take on this philosophy of win the day, whether it's practice, whether it's strength and conditioning, whether it's scouting uh, report, whether it's shoot around, whatever it is, we're going to find a way, forget about winning games. Like let's find some small wins that we can have. And we started the, that, you know, that idea, that motto 
Um, and it really kind of took off. And actually, we won last uh, seven out of our last nine games. Um, okay. So we really mm -hmm. did. We, we figured it out. And, and like you mentioned, one was a double overtime loss um, on the road. Um, mm -hmm. So, again, we, we really just kind of, I think, over the course of the year, uh, the players got more experience. Again, I, I lost in, in the entire starting lineup from the year before. So the players that I had on my current roster, they had no experience playing in those close games. They had no experience executing down the stretch. I myself had no experience calling a timeout. You know, I gave Coach more suggestions in timeouts, but it was never like, when do I call a timeout and what exactly do we run, right? So I think mm -hmm. over the course of the year, I got better we got better and we figured it out um, along the way um, and really just kind of hit our stride uh, late Feb February into March and, and really pleased with the way we finished off the season. Absolutely. Well, I was going to add, think about that because you mentioned that adjustment and how that's been a learning curve for you. And it seemed like you obviously did well because I, I even saw that there's a tweet that I put out how you won head coach of the year for Rice. And I mean, I'm not, obviously I feel like when people kind of, compliment me for things i kind of like okay like that's not that big of a deal but that's an accomplishment for a, a very good athletic university um can you talk about that a little bit i mean that was you were obviously doing something right there yeah. so, especially <laughs> yeah. your first year yeah, yeah i appreciate it um uh, yeah it was it was pretty awesome um i uh i wasn't expecting it i mean we like you said great uh university a lot of female sports are doing really well i mean we had a volleyball team that goes to the ncaa tournament wins their first round game uh, women's soccer is great women's tennis is great women's track and field is great so there's a lot of great women's programs over there and um and and i was shocked uh and not anticipating it and not sure that i deserve it in that room Sure, um, I but I am very uh, proud of uh, the honor, like I said at our banquet and I said in my tweet, um, definitely a staff award, definitely a team right. award. Everyone bought in, everyone trusted me, everyone believed in the vision. Uh, and even when things weren't going the right way, they showed up every single day uh, ready to fight and ready to figure it out. And even the games that we lost, every coach came down the line and was like, man, your kids fight for you. They are tough and yeah. something that I'm really proud of. Absolutely. Absolutely. Before we continue, I want to take a quick second to tell you about our sponsor, Flatlands Dress Up Insurance Group that has our whole world covered with agents in five offices throughout Eastern North Carolina to help you decide how much coverage you need. Offering policies for home and auto, recreational vehicles, commercial, crop, health, life, and employee benefits. They are able to combine options to find a comprehensive solution that works for you. Flatlands Jessa protects the things you love so you can spend less time wearing and more time enjoying them. Find them on Facebook and Instagram at Flatlands Jessup. You can also visit their webpage at www.flatlandsjessup.com. So please make sure to go and check them out. You mentioned, too, talking about women's sports. So one of the things I wanted to bring up with you, which was some, because, uh, I mean, for, uh, I'm, I'm sure, I, don't, I don't know if you know this, Coach, but my wife, uh, she went to the University of South Carolina. So, obviously, you know, she is a big Gamecock fan, and then some of my money is going to the USC, so therefore I'm partially a USC fan as well. So by 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 the factor of that's where my money's going. Um, so, uh, <laughs> but, you know, so, so obviously we watched the national championship. And one of the things I loved, was after the championship game, Don Staley's interview, which I'm sure you've probably have seen. Um, but I mean, mm -hmm. I loved just, I mean, first of all, I mean, obviously how she said that, I mean, the, that there's no doubt this, the sport of women's basketball is growing, but also to talking about how like she even basically called out ESPN while on ESPN saying, listen, you guys need competition. Like, you know, we, we need, we need uh, other networks that are picking them up and basically, you know, giving ESPN some healthy competition here. And so, I mean, you know, I wanted to kind of ask you kind of what was your general thoughts on that interview, which I think, you know, spoke thousands of words across the country, but also too, I mean, I, I truly do think that one of the things I love right now is that, um, that the sport of women's basketball is getting more competitive. Like, you know, one of the things that I was saying, like five years ago, if you were to fill out an NCAA women's basketball tournament bracket, it was going to be UConn and then how is, and then, you know, who's going to lose to UConn pretty much. I mean, that was pretty much going to be what was going to happen. But now, I mean, right. NC state's getting up there. Stanford's, you know, won a national championship last year, Baylor, South Carolina. Um, you know, I mean, you name it, like even the ACC is getting more competitive. So, which I think is great for the sport. So, uh, you know, so, mm -hmm. I, you know, if you wouldn't mind, I mean, just kind of, again, talk a little bit about kind of what your thoughts were on Don Staley's interview. I'm curious your thoughts and then just kind of, yeah, the thoughts of the growth of women's basketball. Yeah. I mean, Dawn Staley's amazing. I mean, she's great for our game. Uh, love that she is a female head coach uh, that is 
um, being successful, right? And I think mm-hmm. that's great for uh, for other women looking up to her, saying I, I can be there too, right? Um, so yeah, she has a great platform and the ability to to use her voice um, for comments like that. And so I think that's great for our game. Uh, people are going to listen to Don Staley, right? I mean, because again, the success that she's had. So any chance that successful coaches have an opportunity to grow our game, uh, I'm all for it. Uh, Mm -hmm. I think over the course of this year, watching, uh, seeing tweets about how the views were up for the NCAA tournament all year long. I mean, that Mm -hmm. was exciting. Um, You know, there was more uh, parody in our game this year. There were upsets. There were fun games to watch. Um, Everybody said like, oh, you guys host. So like whenever you host, there's never any upsets and that we proved that to be wrong. I mean, not true this year. Right. So there was a lot of upsets. That was exciting. Um, I think, again, you know, if you go back to the NC state and the Yukon game, if there was anybody that watched that game that was thinking like, I don't know if I want to be a women's basketball fan or not. After you watch that game, there's no yeah. way you could walk away from it saying that game, that sport's not good. That game's not good. I don't want to watch it. Like that was unbelievable for our game. Um, one of the best games of the tournaments, unfortunate it was at the lead eight um, and not in the final four, but um, I love the way our game is growing, and I think it will just continue uh, on this path. Um, so I, I like it. I like not having just filling out UConn to be the winners every year. They've been great, and they've been – I mean, it's it's been amazing what Gino has done, um, but I'm excited to see change in, in who's winning those national championships. Un- unless it's NC State or Rice, right? <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> I'm jo- yes. I'm joking. Fill that I'm out joking. all yeah. the way. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm kidding. No, I'm, but I'm – so I'm going to get back to Rice here, and I'm curious what like if you have like an elevator speech for what excites you about Rice, and what what is that? Because I mean, like it's it's to me, I see a lot of potential at going to the university. I think there's a lot there to offer. It's in, like you know the Houston area, uh, really great school. So what what do you kind of pitch to your recruits? <clears throat> Yeah. Um, so for for my family and I, uh, it was a very diverse city. We're a biracial family. So going somewhere with diversity was really important for us. And I think being able to sell diversity in recruiting uh, is important as well. So that was one thing. The city of Houston has a ton of things to do. A lot of great restaurants, uh, all the pro teams that you could ever want to go to. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, the program has been successful. I think a lot of times people say, go somewhere that's at the rock bottom of the conference. Like you can only go up. I also believe there's a reason why sometimes programs aren't successful. It's not always easy to be successful at certain places. So the fact that Rice has been successful, they've won conference championships. They've won regular season camp championships. They won the WIT championship before I got there. I was like, it is is proof. There's proof that you can be successful if it's done the right way. So that ch- that's another thing that I've uh, been selling. Uh, high academics are important to young ladies uh, and their parents. So I can recruit nationally. Uh, Texas should be my home base uh, because there's a lot of great players in Texas. But because Rice's brand is known across the country, uh, I can be on the phone with someone in the state of Washington. I can be in, on the phone with someone in the state of Maryland or Georgia. Um, so, I mean, my roster right now, I have one from Ohio, one from Pennsylvania, three from Oklahoma, three from Georgia, uh, a couple uh, from Texas. So they're they're all over. Um, so, again, I think those are some of the, the major selling factors. I mean, education is great. You're going to be um, in an elite network once you graduate. Uh, that's really going to help you uh, be able to find jobs however you want, however you please. Um, and then the, the program is successful. You can win here. You can win championships. You can go to the NCAA tournament, and Houston's a great city uh, to live in. Hmm. Yeah. I'm so well, so, <laughs> go ahead, Greg. Oh, I, I just kind of wanted to take this a little bit. You, you, you mentioned your players, and this was the special story that I wanted to talk to you about. One of your, uh, one of your unofficial team members there, uh, um, um, I forgot her name just now. Addison. Ad- Addison. Yeah, for for your team impact. I just wanted to just kind of hear how you how Rice and the women's team got involved with not only Addison but Team Impact, which which the organization that you know she's a part of. So um, for sure, if you could just share that a little bit. Yeah, that's great. Um, so when I first got there, our team was really kind of craving more community service. Um, and they wanted to get, um, take part in the community a little bit more and however we could do that. So we started just doing some digging, started doing some research on some things that we could do. We found out about this program team impact. Um, so what we, we were going to be paired up with a young lady, 
uh, that was going to be a part of our team for the next two years. Um, and this young lady drives an hour and a half into Houston. Houston has a very large medical center right across the street um, and very world renowned surgeons, doctors, everything. Um, so Addison has um, some health issues, um, some lower extremity issues that she's battling, she's going through. Um, so she comes in often for doctor's appointments. Um, so it was an easy pair for us. She loves women's basketball. So when she drives in for doctor's appointments, she always comes over and spends some time with us on campus. Um, she's our number one fan. She's at every game. She sits on the bench with us. She comes in the locker room with us. Uh, she's posting stuff on Instagram uh, all the time about uh, our girls and our team. She text messages with our girls. Um, so just a, a really special relationship uh, to allow her to have some, some fun, uh, have something to look forward to, have some great young ladies to look up to as big sisters while she's going through a, a hard part, a hard, a hard stretch uh, of her life. Uh, so just being there to be, you know, support, love on her and, and help push her through uh, all the adversity she's kind of facing right now in her life at such a, a very young age. Mm -hmm. No, I think that's I think that's awesome. And, and more athletes need to use their platforms for those type of things. Um, you know, you always want to be the positive change, whether it's, you know, in your local community on a national stage. Um, so that's really great. And I'm really proud to hear those kind yeah. of stories. Yeah, Absolutely. for sure. It's been awesome. She's loving it. And uh, so one thing I wanted to, 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 you know, kind of talk about here, too, as we kind of wrap up this first part here is, um, so for those who don't know, uh, you know, you were a four year starter at App State and you actually, if I'm not mistaken, still hold the career or sorry, the, I guess, career record for, for most three pointers, if I'm not mistaken, 177. Yeah. Someone texted me and told me that it got broken. Um, uh, but I don't, I, I don't know if that's true or not, but uh, someone did text me recently and told me it was broken, but records okay. are meant to be broken. So that's okay. But I did receive yeah. a text message that that had been broken. So I probably okay. need to get that off my bio. <laughs> hey, I mean, Hey, if it's know, on the internet, it's definitely true. Well, <laughs> well, you just add in at the time, you know, whatever, you yes. know I mean? At the, at the end yeah. day, Hey, it's, yeah. it's, it's still impressive to say the least. So, yeah. um, but, yeah. So one of the things I wanted to kind of ask about, so, you know, I know all of us NC State fans, like, you know, when we face Indiana, we know Indiana because first of all, I mean, they've, they've, I feel like over the last couple of years when we face them, they've been a tough team to go against. Obviously Indiana is the team that knocked us out last year in the NCAA tournament, uh, you know, which is a bummer. But, you know, one of the things I love, you know, watching is, is Ashley Williams and how she's a assistant coach at Indiana now. And, and uh, you know, one of the things that kind of was going through my head that I wanted to kind of ask you is, so being a former player, you know, you see coaches that, some head coaches that are former players of that sport. Some, you know, didn't play a sport at all and just, you know, just loved it and just wanted to be a GA. So from you being a former player, you know, do you feel like that there's an edge, you know, per se, or like a benefit of like, let's say if I'm like a, uh, an AD and I was interviewing somebody that was a former player and I was interviewing that somebody that wasn't a former player, is there a benefit that you see of one versus the other? I mean, there's, there's great coaches that are coming from both backgrounds out there. Um, I think for mm -hmm. me, I would always sell. Um, I was a competitive athlete. I, I walked in these shoes. I walked uh, and, and did this journey. Um, I know what the student athletes uh, went through or going through because I went through it myself. Um, so I think, you know, you can sell it that way um, as that could give you a little bit of advantage. You're going to say, I'm going to understand what my student athletes are, are going through day in and day out uh, because I walked that too. And I went through that journey. Um, so you can talk about that. So I think that helps you. Um, but again, there's, there's great coaches that, that come from both. For me, again, I would just sell. I was a very competitive player. I hated to lose. Um, and I say that now, all the time now. I hate to lose uh, more than I love to win. Um, and I probably got that a little bit from Westmore as well. So, uh, you know, I think there's, uh, there's definitely a, a competitive advantage of being able to say that, that you played the sport, being able to say, uh, you know about the 6 a.m. wake up calls and strength and conditioning. You know about, you know, making mile times or you know about uh, making shuttle runs or whatever your conditioning test may be. Um, you know about the gut wrenching losses. You know about the exciting overtime wins like you. You took part in all of those things as well. So it, it can carry over uh, and allow you to uh, be able to have that, those experiences as a head coach as well. Yeah, no. Uh, and, uh, you know, one other thing, too, I wanted to ask about as well is obviously, you know, basically your 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 coaching career basically started at App State, went to James Madison, 
went to NC State, and then and then now you went to Rice. So I wanted to, I mean, kind of ask. I mean, you know, was it a, uh, you know, kind of a question in your head of like, man, like I've spent my you know, pretty much my whole you know recent time so far on the East Coast, and now I'm heading, you know, basically to to the South South. You know, it's I mean, I'm sure it was kind of a culture shock a little bit for for you and the family. For sure. Uh, if you would have told me two years ago, my first head coaching job would have been in Texas. I would have told you you were crazy. Uh, <laughs> like there's no way, right? There's no way for me. Yeah. It was very much like, I'm going to stay in North Carolina, Virginia, South Carolina, Tennessee. Like I'm going to be in that area. Um, yeah. and I had an opportunity to go for a job, um, that I thought was going to be like a dream job for me because it fell into those parameters when I got there, it didn't exactly look the way I thought it was going to look. Um, and my family and my husband and I decided to turn it down. Um, it's like, all right, so we're, we're just back at NC State, and I'm happy, and I'm okay with that. Um, I got teamed up in this program called the Next Up program. It was like 30 female assistants that are ready to become head coaches. Um, so I was in this program, this clinic, uh, and I got paired up with a senior-level administrator, um, she was uh, AD at Central Michigan. She had been at Texas for years as like a SWA. And she was telling me, you sound a lot like me. Like you, you have these parameters. You say, I want it to be this state, this state, or this state. She said, I was the same way. That's why I spent 17 years at Texas. And everybody kept saying like, why are you not taking an AD job? So she finally opened up her parameters when the central Michigan fell in love with it. And so she was like, I'm just telling you, like, just open your parameters. You never know what could happen. Yeah. And a week later, uh, rice called me and I was like, okay, God, like I hear you. Uh, I'm going to open it up. I'm going to at least explore. I'm going to at least look at it and see. Uh, but still Texas. Whoa, like, I don't know. Um, uh, but then it just ended up checking off a lot of boxes and, and it felt really right for our family. Okay. Awesome. I love it. Well, well, first of all, again, thank you so much again for, for sharing the time about rice. So, but Hey, for part two, Wolfpack nation, make sure to tune in with us as we're actually be talking some NC state, talking some final four, talking this NC state women's uh, run here. So make sure to tune in with us for part two, but first off, if you haven't already, make sure once again, hit that subscribe button It's free to do and make sure you don't miss out whenever we release new NC state content, get this video a like, so that way you will put this video in front of more NC state fans. Also to give us a follow toughy talk now, but make sure as well to, to follow coach Ed, along hey then they you know once you're wolfpack family you're always wolfpack family and uh we gotta Absolutely. even support even support her and all others you know as, as they move about their career because we all we all know that westmore and all of us are very proud of uh you know coaches like 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 coach Edmonds here so uh as always thank you all so much and it's always good pack y'all see you all part two